thing that defines a competent floor installer versus somebody who is just, you know, flitting from one job to the next and who does not understand the science is how an installer manages the expansion gap around a door jam. Now, while I have a pine one or a timber version over here and I've got a steel one on this side, the methodology is exactly the same. You undercut them, but there's a science to it. There's a way to do it safely and securely. Neither of these door jams will actually drop to the floor if you undercut them at the bottom because they are fixed into the respective walls. If it's timber stud, they are screwed or nailed into the timber stud. If it's a mortar, brick and mortar wall, there are these flat flanges that are actually fixed to the back of the steel door jam that are actually cemented into the wall. So they will support the door jam when you undercut it at the bottom. So no need to have any fear about the door jam is going to drop. When you're undercutting a steel door jam or a timber door jam, a great tool to have is to have an oscillating multi-tool. Now we're going to get into the detail because lucky enough we've got Martin from Festool who's visiting us and he's brought one along for us to try on these two door frames. But investing in the right kit can really save you a lot of time, can give you a fantastic end result and I highly recommend that you explore this as your solution around timber door jams and steel door jams. So here in our training booth, you can see how we have created a traditional and rather common methodology of how to manage the expansion gap for a steel door jam. But if we use a undercut method, and this is where the oscillating multi-tool really comes to its own, we can create a beautiful end result that is functional and doesn't restrict the floor when it needs to expand and contract. Let's show you how to do it. So if you are planning on undercutting your door jams or kickers or any vertical obstruction to hide an expansion gap, the best time to do it is before you have even laid your first plank or even put in the underlay. Generally, it does make a lot of noise and mess and dust and there is debris. And doing this during your substrate preparation phase is absolutely ideal. When undercutting a door frame, what I like to do first is I like to mark out my cut line roughly. Now obviously your oscillating multi-tool is going to be running flush on top of your laminate spacer. Remember to use the underlay and the plank that you're cutting to. Because the oscillating blade is only one mil um, or even less than, you can actually run directly on top of the underlay and the floor type and get a really tight and accurate cutting line. Now remember we're going to be cutting the exposed cut and if the door frame is cemented into the substrate we'll be doing two cuts, the top one and the bottom one. I'm going to start on a slow speed and then we're going to work up from there.
Now what you saw was quite interesting there is that my temporary construction for a door frame, <laughs> the screw actually popped out, but that was actually fairly easy to get through. There's the removable piece. And now when I reinstall this floor, we'll obviously clean that out. Myself, I would run a little uh, metal file just to neaten off or just smooth off that cut edge. But now my floor is going to be able to slide in underneath and it's going to look absolutely gorgeous. So you need to double check and make sure that your floor still has room to move. But that is a very neat end result.